Welcome to Cognitive Toolbox Tool Number 4, Mathematics, Dr. Ken here. So we're going to deal with the elephant in the room, mathematics. Mathematics is not the physics, and physics is not the mathematics. So let's explain that. So mathematics isn't the physics, and physics is not the maths. Mathematics is a constructed modelling system not the actual physics itself. Math is a great modeling system because we can't see, touch, taste, smell or hear electricity. Maths models electrical physics very well, but maths is an abstraction in and of itself. Maths works better than analog analogies like water flow, which we use often in DC to start with, but the analogy falls over reasonably quickly. Two mathematical systems need to be learned about. The first is simplex or simple algebra. I use the word simplex because simplex units of measure only have one direction, and that is magnitude. E.g. distance is measured in metres, just one, one unit. Distance, metres. The second is complex algebra and geometry. Complex quantities have more than one direction or dimension, e.g. wind in kilometres an hour and direction. If you watch the weather forecast, they will tell you that you have a northeaster at 15 kilometres an hour tomorrow. That means its direction is northeast and its magnitude will be 15 kilometres an hour. That is a complex quantity. So mathematics is a constructed modelling system, not the actual physics. Maths is a great modelling system because we can't see the electricity. But the downside is we're using an abstraction to make sense of another abstraction. So we're adding layers of complexity. This is OK, but we need to understand it so we can effectively use it and manage that complexity. Maths works better than analog analogies, the water flow one that I mentioned earlier. Analogies are okay for the short term, but they often fall short very quickly. If you're using an analogy, be prepared for a shortfall and possible, if not likely, misconceptions. And they will come. Just be prepared to have your pictures, your mental models, challenged. Always, always be open to have your way and your way of understanding it challenged. So there are two mathematical systems that we need to learn about. The first is simple single dimension algebra. This is the stuff that everybody is supposed to do at school. An example of this is Ohm's law. Volts equals the resistance multiplied by the current or V equals R times I. Or R is equal to PL divided by A. This is the algebra most of us learn at school, as I've just mentioned. The skills here are to be able to recognize the formula, the model, that describes the physics. The best way to do this is to know the physics first and foremost. Then selecting the correct model or formula becomes pretty easy and obvious. Then substitute the data into the formula around the problemless thing that's got to be solved. Take the data out and put it into the model. Transpose to make the unknown the subject of the formula. And finally, do the calculation. Here, my recommendation is reasonably straightforward. Simply to do practice. The more you do this, the more you will understand the connections to the physics. The maths is not the physics but the maths will help get the relationships of the physics correct in your head. So the second is complex algebra and geometry in AC. The reason I mention geometry is because we can use geometry to represent complex quantities and do some simple mathematical operations like addition, subtraction. And this geometry is called phasor diagrams. And if you haven't done any AC yet, when you get to AC, you will learn all about phasor diagrams. Now, complex mass and complex quantities. 
Complex numbers have two or more dimensions that I've just mentioned. You're going to use complex numbers in AC or alternating current. In AC, all quantities actually have three dimensions, magnitude, direction and rotation. If you've only got magnitude and direction, it's called a vector. But as soon as we add the third of rotation, we call it a phasor. And you can see a diagram here in the center of the page. And this is the complex quantity of impedance, Z, having three dimensions of resistance, reactance, and rotation in an anti-clockwise. And I've expressed it in geometry here in the middle of the page. And you can see the blue arrow rotating anti-clockwise. That's the rotation part of it. And I've got the components of resistance and reactance make up the impedance. Now, algebraically, I can represent that complex number. It's Z equals R plus JX. J is used to explain that X is 90 degrees to R. So there are two forms of complex numbers. They're called rectangular and polar. And the diagram I've got on the screen is a rectangular representation because I'm using a triangle to represent the sides of a rectangle and the diagonal across the rectangle makes a triangle. So it's called rectangular. So let me do a little animation. Here is a complex quantity in AC and I've drawn an AC waveform which you can see on the left hand side and it started at zero degrees and it's raising to its most uh, magnitude at 90 or its maximum let's call it our maximum voltage and then it's coming back down to zero then it's going to the maximum minus and then it's coming back to zero or 360 on the next cycle the red arrow is going to move horizontally showing us the degrees so if you watch carefully I won't go through it too quickly but as the red arrow moves across the degrees my diagram here you will see this arrow get bigger and bigger and bigger here till it gets to its maximum at 90 degrees then it's going to get smaller and smaller and come back to zero then it's going to get bigger and bigger in the negative direction and then smaller in this direction so you'll see what I mean that AC quantities are complex they're constantly changing both in their magnitude and in their direction so here we go just watch the diagram as I go through it there's the maximum at 90 coming back towards minimum there's the minimum now we're going negative but it's getting bigger again in negative now it's getting smaller again as we come back to zero so in AC we have a complex quantity it's constantly changing in its direction it's constantly changing in its magnitude therefore it is represented using complex numbers and in our case we're going to use geometry and phasor diagrams so complex quantities in AC the quantity whether it be voltage current etc is always changing direction it's rotating and its magnitude is varying to simplify this constant changing of the quantity we can average out the magnitude using root mean squared or RMS this is the effective DC value when we measure the RMS value from the reference angle it is normally at zero degrees in addition I just ran I used geometry to represent the complex quantity and this is also how we add and subtract quantities that have magnitudes and directions or angles from the reference so what are our take-homes here mathematics is a part of electrical physics so you'll need to learn how the algebra and the geometry works and how it really works in relation to the physics the best way to do this is to practice the relationships between the maths as a modeling system and the actual physics. Master the algebra 
through practice and transposition in particular. Practice geometry, done to scale so you can add and subtract complex quantities. We call this using phasor diagrams. So I hope you've enjoyed Cognitive Tools number four, an introduction to simplex and complex mathematics.